Hey, what's up? This is St. Joe here with Point Blank. In this series, we're going to take a look at using Machine 2 in standalone mode to add weight, punch, and character to your drums, as well as sculpting the overall sound of your track. In this specific video, we'll be looking at using a mixer as well as auxiliary routing. If you want to learn more about Machine, make sure you check out our Machine Weekend course at Point Blank LA by going to pointblankla.net. So let's get into it. All right, so in this video, I want to take a look at how the mixer and router works inside a machine, specifically how this pattern view relates to the mixer view. So the easiest way to kind of look at this is to think of each individual pad as its own channel inside of the mixer. So if you want to add something to an individual pad, maybe an effect or a plugin of some sort, you would do that at the sound level. If you want to have an impact on the entire group or all 16 channels at once, you would do that at the group level. And we can see right here all of our plugins. So this will be plugins for the individual sounds. This will be my plugins for the group. And this translates directly to the mixer view. So if I go over here to mixer, I can see the 16 sounds. And right here, this is the same window. So this window here is the same as what you see right here. This is the individual sounds or the individual plugins. If I double click up here, now I'm just focused on the whole group. So now I have three groups. Let's just press play. So we can see that if I mute the group, all the sounds inside of that group are going to be muted. Whereas if I have this open and we do the same thing, I can mute the individual sounds and I can deal with the individual sounds inside of that group because each one of these represents its own channel. So if you look at this, and let's close it because you may not see all these at first. So this may be what you see. Of course, you got your level, you got your mute. You can click on the mute. You can right click to solo. You can see your output for the sound. So we can see it's going to the group. So all of our sounds are routed to the group. And then over here, this is the group level output. This is not the master output. This is the group level output. If we were to be focused on the individual groups, if I double click on this. So now each one of these strips represents the whole group. So all 16 sounds are represented by this one fader. You know, so this is just our group output level. We can see our group is going to the master. I can mute the whole group. Now this is going to be my master fader. I can also switch it over here to be my cue output. Whereas if you want to maybe demo some sounds before you send them to the master, especially if you're like performing live or something like that, you can set this to go to its own external output. Let's go back to pad view. So each one of these channels represents one of the pads inside of your group. We want to see the I.O. Now I can see the audio input. I can see my MIDI. I can see my MIDI output. If I want to see my plugins up here. I just press that. Now I can see my plugins. I can enable or disable those. I can add plugins directly here as well. If I want to see my auxiliary routing, I can look at that as well. So what you see here in terms of your plugins also shows up down here. I can add stuff down here as well. And these are the same. As what you see over here. So let's say if I disable this. So if I disable this plugin, I disable the sampler on this channel. If I go back to the mixer, it's going to be disabled. So everything works together. And what you see over here is just kind of like a larger view of that channel strip. You can also see your outputs and inputs right there. So there's audio, auxiliary, and MIDI outputs. I can see my input. And then also for the group level, input, output. And then if you want to see your plugins for the master, you can see that as well. So uh, really straightforward there. One thing I think a lot of people forget about is the auxiliary routing. It's not traditional in terms of having specifically set auxiliary tracks or return send tracks or anything like that. Machine is super flexible in that you can set up your auxiliary however you want. So to do that, let's say we go in here and make a new group. And I'm going to name this group Effects. So now if I go into my effects group, and let's say we want to add, just go in and add some plugins. So we'll just do some internal effects. Let's say a filter on one, and maybe we want to do a, a reverb. And on this one, we're going to do like a flanger. So let's say we just add those three. I like to go in and name each one. So this one's going to be reverb, and the other one's going to be flanger. And you'll see why I did that in a minute. 
So let's say we want to send this snare into maybe a flanger. So now I can see, I know my effects group, filter, effects group, reverb, effects group, flanger. That's why I like to name it because it makes it easier to route. So let's say we want to send that into the flanger. And now I can control how much of that sound is going into that effect. And this view is going to be the same. You can see it's post. We can see it's going to that flanger. If I come back over here, and if I go over here to my output under auxiliary, it's the same exact thing. I can see the flanger. I can see my level. And I can see the setting is post. I can change that to pre if I want. I also have another auxiliary. Maybe I want to send it to reverb over here. So you can see it's really flexible when you start dealing with auxiliary routing and, you know, using groups as their own effects buses. And the thing is, this allows you to share the same effects across multiple groups. So maybe if you have a reverb setting that you like and you want to use the same reverb setting for all of your sounds, you can load that reverb once and then use the auxiliary routing to send your different sounds into that reverb. So let's say maybe this one, we're going to turn it, turn the flanger down. And maybe I want to send, uh, let's say I want my hi-hat to go over to the reverb as well. So it just gives me a lot more flexibility. And you don't have to load your effects multiple times if you don't want to. Of course, if you want to load it directly on the sound, you can do that. Just want to make sure you understand the routing and how flexible it can be. So again, just to recap, if you want to load something directly on an individual pad, you would do that at the sound level. And if you're in the mixer, it's going to look like this. You're going to see all 16 sounds expanded. And then you can just go to the individual channel and load your plugin or effect as you wish. If you want to load it at the group level, you can be in group view. And now each one of these strips represents the entire group. So if I wanted to put something over the whole you know, drum group, I can go in and maybe say put a compressor. Now I see the compressor there. If I were to look back over here under the group plugins, we can see that the compressor has been loaded. If you want to set up effects that are shared across the whole group, like we did here, you can set up auxiliary routing. And then that way, each one of these pads represents its own effects channel. And you can use the auxiliary to send different sounds into it, like maybe reverb or delay flanger, whatever it is that you want to use on multiple sounds, but you don't want to put it over the whole group, or maybe your sounds are in different groups, you can set it up like this and get really flexible. Also, another thing to remember when you're dealing with the routing like this is you can actually go in and route these into each other. So if I wanted to send the filter into the reverb, I could, and that way all I have to do is send a sound into the filter. It would also go from the filter into the reverb, so you can set up multi-effects chains that way. So machines routing is definitely flexible. It's just a matter of understanding how everything relates to each other. Each individual pad represents its own channel inside of the mixer. If you want to load something directly to an individual pad, you would do it at the sound level. If you want something to impact all 16 pads at once, you would load it at the group level. If you have an effect that you want to share across multiple pads or multiple sounds, you would do that by setting up a separate group and then just using your auxiliary routing. Also remember inside of your effects, you can set up different effects chains. I can either route, you know, different sounds to each other, or I can just stack multiple effects. Maybe I want to stack a transient master and some other things directly on here. So anything that I send to this channel will have all these effects applied to it. So it's really flexible. It's all about just getting in, experimenting, and understanding how things relate. So just remember what you see here is the same as what you see inside of the mixer.